I have aspirations to influence government. And one of the things that I realized at a very young age is that there is like this really small group of people called politicians that have the power to make decisions for everybody else. And I realized if I wanted things to change for me as a part of the everybody else, then I had to find a way to have a seat at the table. So beginning in sixth grade, um, on and off throughout my middle school and high school career, I served in ASB because it was important to me to see some things change in my school and I couldn't see them change just as Tasha, the honor roll student, or Tasha, the, the star basketball player, or Tasha, the band member, or Tasha, the choir member. I actually had to have a title. I realized the power of position. I don't have a bunch of degrees. I don't, ha I don't have any degrees, actually. Um, I don't have a crystal clean past. Matter of fact, I have a lot of lived experience. I have lived experience in um, being unsheltered and unhoused. Yes, I've lived in abandoned apartments. I've slept outside on the street. I've slept in shelters with rats. I have lived in subsidized housing. I have been on Section 8, the Housing Choice Voucher Program. I've also been a survivor of domestic violence. I've had to flee domestic violence. I've lived in transitional housing. Yes, I've sat many, many years, two decades to be exact, social services offices, trying to get food stamps and medical care and even cash assistance when needed. Experienced a lot and two decades of single parenthood with a lack of financial education and operating in survival mode also yielded a lot of financial mistakes. And I refuse to be quantified by those mistakes because God has given me a voice. That is why they call me the advocacy queen. That's why I created that organization because I've been advocating for people since I was a kid. And to put words to the pains and the issues that a lot of people like me and a lot of people like you are facing. But there's a couple of things that I've been running into as I've been navigating the political landscape. And right now I'm not running for any office specifically. I really believe that I'm to be a bridge. I'm to be an educator. I'm to be an empower. I'm to expose what um, power we have as people in a say so in our lives to everyday people right now. But what I'm learning is that there's all these nuances. You know, these are the people that my life life, decisions for my life and my family for four years are making these choices for me and they can't even get along. I've been in the pageant industry for over a decade and a half. And I just remember even in my first years of competing, like I would get mad at other people who were stronger candidates than I was, who were stronger delegates and competitor. Like how immature is that? What was I mad about? They prepared, they have practiced, they had made sure they fine tuned themselves and they were ready for the opportunity. So what am I mad for that they have a momentum and that the judges are empowered and excited about them? Like, how am I gonna be mad at them for preparation that I didn't do? How am I gonna be mad at them for a calling that I don't have? <laughs> so I have just felt like I'm supposed to be a light in that way and to show ways like, hey, if you are good at what you do and you believe you are the best candidate, then just be that best candidate. Like when I run for office, I'm gonna keep it 100 with you guys. Like I'm not doing the mudslinging. I have been the victim of a defamation uh, slandering. I have experienced people loving me at the beginning of the pageant, and then when they don't win, they hate me and I'm a horrible person. And I've had my name run through the mud. I've had people lie about things I've done that have bruised my character for years. So I have been the victim of those things and I will never, even if it's true or has truth to it, I will never come out of my mouth negativity that destroys another person. If I have to destroy another human being for you to vote for me, then I don't want your vote. I will lose behind my character. I will lose behind my integrity. And of course, you know, I am a woman of God. I love Jesus. Yes, I do. I love Jesus. How about you? But let me tell you this, you know, Jesus ultimately looked like the loser, right? Because he died. You know, he actually died. He got crucified. He was spit at. He was brutally beaten. And they thought that they won. They thought, oh, he lost, I won. I got to, you know, the Romans and all the different people that turned on him, they really thought they were doing something. But guess what happened three days later? He rose. And then guess what? As a result, he's been able to save and change and transform and heal people for the rest of time. If you like me today, you don't like me tomorrow because of who you saw me in a picture with, don't like me at all. If you don't understand, listen, I'm going to, yes, I am a conservative. I am a 
Republican, and I am because I understand my history. I believe in the anti-slavery party. I believe in the party that championed civil rights and women's rights. I have a grandfather who served in the military who lived to see the very first black president, but on his deathbed actually stated that he chose to vote for his brother in arms, who was not a Democrat, right? Um, my parents, my father, a pastor, my mother, who also was a candidate for council, were also conservatives and raised me in the history of knowing that. Therefore, that is why I am one. However, I am not naive to the shift of the party. I am not naive to the ugliness that resides within it. And instead of me being angry about it and moving to the other side, per se, and turning blue, it's about me educating and empowering. I'm not going to turn my back on a foundation that I was given just because a few people started to act crazy. And honestly, I love R&B music. I love Aretha Franklin. There are some R&B artists that are out today that are embarrassment. They make R&B look bad, but am I gonna stop liking R&B? No, I'm not gonna do that. So at the end of the day, um, I'm not gonna compromise who I am. And if that means I get less votes, if that means you don't wanna support me, if that means you're like, oh my gosh, you know, she's not taking sides. Okay, no, I'm not. By I'm going to be a lived experience candidate flat out. Like I am the person that you guys have been making all these decisions for and you're off. I can actually speak to certain things because not only have I lived them, I have worked amongst them. I've given my life to community service. I've given my life to serving the least of these. I've chosen to take lesser paying jobs just so I can help people do this thing called life. Literally, I take phone calls at six in the morning and at 10 o'clock at night, helping people navigate spaces and places and systems and services that are supposed to be there to help them, but they discourage them and they trap them. That's what I do. I will do that without a title. I will do that without a role in political government. The only way to actually make things change effectively for the people I care about is to have a seat at the table. And I will be vying for that opportunity and I will continue to vie for that opportunity without compromising who I am, who God has made me to be, how I operate to do it. If God is for me, who can be against me? And you're gonna see me in groups that might seemingly conflict. You're gonna see me working with the NAACP. You're gonna see me with the Washington GOP. You're going to see me with individuals who believe that you know criminal justice should be a little bit tougher, but you're also gonna see me um, working with organizations that are helping individuals have their second chance. You're gonna see me working in groups that might seemingly have separate agendas. But that's the issue is that I care about people. I care about the mission of those organizations, not the agenda of those organizations. It is the Resurrection Weekend. It is, um, today is Good Friday. So as we, you know, solemnly uh, remember the sacrifice and the pain that Jesus went through for us. Like, it just breaks my heart that anybody would love me that much to go through that much for me, knowing that I'm gonna mess up, knowing I'm gonna make mistakes, because knowing all those things, he still went through that for me. So I honor that today. And I always look, I'll also look forward to his resurrection on Sunday. So it's with those two principles and sentiments that I present this video to you that like, when I do get a seat at the table, or I do begin to my process of campaigning and all of that good stuff, you guys know I've been in community for almost 20 years, literally. And if I've ever had a title, it has always been used for the purposes of bettering people. I wanna be one of those people that's on our, our Capitol lawn, picketing, begging legislators to hear my voice. No, I want to be one of those legislators that you can write to, that will relate to you, that will be able to, when you say to me how you're feeling about a certain situation, I can actually empathize, not feel sorry for you, but empathize because I've had to figure out how to put food on the table. I had to call around and get my kids adopted for Christmas holiday after holiday just so they can have stuff around the tree. I've been caught in between the underemployment cycle for decades. It sucks and I get it. So God has also gifted me with the ability to persuade, the ability to communicate and the ability to connect. And I plan to use that gift alongside my lived experience, alongside my professional industry experience to hopefully be able to represent people that I care about, which literally is everybody. God has called me 
I'm not going to hide that, but I also wanna create a space for people to be who they are, who's still a valuable human being with a heart that beats. That means that I actually care for you. That means I'm going to represent you. That also means that I'm going to walk alongside you. You have a wonderful holiday weekend. I hope that however you choose to celebrate, that you remember the sacrifices of anyone that is sacrificed for you because they care about you and they believe in you. All right, signing off. Have a blessed, blessed,